Greetings to everyone from around the world. This is a Sunday sermon recording from Father Mike of Our Lady of the Hills Parish here in Southwest Ohio. I am your host, Ishmael Ali, and here is Father Mike's sermon. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples and the crowd gathered, making, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard this, they set out to seize Jesus, for they said, he's out of his mind. And the scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he's possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, Jesus began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. This is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and brothers arrived, standing outside. They sent word to Jesus and called him. A crowd seated around Jesus told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside. But he, but he, Jesus, said to them in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I'm going to give you today a sermon that I preached last week at St. Mary and St. Benignus because the people up there said this is such a good sermon. Tell the people at Mary Queen of Heaven. So here it is. It didn't make last week's bulletin, but I have it right here. And uh, the, you know, the Lord works in really wonderful ways. That's all right. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's right. So here is my sermon for Corpus Christi the body of Christ. When someone is performing a good deed, don't stop them. Here is my story. I was having lunch on Saturday, Memorial Day weekend, at a buffet-style restaurant in Eastgate, which I will not name. The place was packed. Oh, gosh, people were everywhere, running hither and thither, getting their food. There was a long line of people stretched all the way outside trying to get in. And do you think, Tom, they would have a second cashier? No. <laughs> Got to save money, you know. So I felt so sorry for this cashier. She was working so hard. A and I paid for my dinner, my lunch. But the cashier was so busy trying to rush people through, she never gave me a receipt. So I couldn't prove that I paid. <laughs> Well, I waited through all the throng of people. I found one table open in the very back. I was so far back that the waitress never even saw me. I left my table. I got my meal, you know, at the buffet. I sat down, ate that. Then I left my table briefly because I wanted to get some ice cream to finish off the meal. So, I get the ice cream. When I returned, I found my table was filled with dirty dishes. 
It was like stacked that high on a tray, on my table. It happened, I guess, when I went to get the ice cream. I'm thinking, why are these dirty dishes on my table? But that didn't stop me from eating my ice cream. Nothing stops me from eating my ice cream. So all I did, I took my hand and I just pushed it to the side and I ate the vanilla ice cream topped with whipped cream and a maraschino cherry. I drank only a sugar-free Coke because I was dieting. <laughs> talk, about, talk about hypocrisy. When the waitress finally came over to remove the dirty dishes, throw on the table, she was, to, she was surprised to see me sitting there. She thought the table was empty. She did not see a receipt on the table. So the waitress sees me and says, hello there. I bet you snuck in without paying, didn't you? Before I could answer the question, she continued, oh, you poor dear, don't worry. I won't report you. You must be hungry. She kept calling, you poor dear. When was the last time you ate? I replied, oh, it's been a while. For me, 10 minutes is a long while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, I act real innocent, you know. And she said, well, you can't live on ice cream. You go up to the buffet and you go get yourself a good meal and don't worry about paying for it, I'll pay for it. So I ate another meal, which I was entitled to anyways. I already paid for it, but she did not know that. So the waitress came back, well, I'm eating here, and she asked, are you full? I bet it takes a lot to fill that tummy. <laughs> I'd laugh at that one. I said, more than you'll ever know. <laughs> then my waitress came over to me again, asking, you probably don't have money to eat tonight. Here, take this $10 and get something, get something at McDonald's tonight. And I really tried. I, I tried, I said, I don't need it. I tried hard to, to deny it, I, to say no, I'll be all right. She would not take no for an answer. So I took the $10. Before leaving, the waitress surprisingly thanked me. She said, thank you for giving me the opportunity to live my Christian faith today. Isn't that beautiful? She went on to say, you know, we Christians, we, do, we need to do more walking and less talking. To walk the walk, not just talk the talk. I was so impressed with her living the Christian faith. And I replied, thank you for showing me how to do that. How to do that. Immediately, I went to the cashier on leaving. I deposited the $10 in the box that was earmarked for the disabled veterans. I could not take that money. And I told the cashier, I said, see that waitress over there? See her over there? Yeah, that one. She wants to pay for my meal, but I already paid for it. Please, do me a favor. Give her this $20 tip. So I gave her a tip. Christianity came alive for me that day. It was a golden moment in a corral of hungry people. <laughs> oh, you got it. I did this at the other church. What's he mean? <laughs> I ate a golden corral. There you <laughs> That's a little clue, you see. And you know, I could have been arrested. Because when people do that, they call the police. And I could have gone to jail. So is, raise your hand if you would have bailed me out. <laughs> well, okay, we got a That's all? Four, four, five? Five people? When I said this sermon at St. Benignus, 
at St. Benedictus, no one raised their hands. I thought you loved me. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, last week, we Catholics celebrated Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. And we remind ourselves always what it means to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a Greek word that means to give thanks, thanksgiving. The Eucharist is a word that is not just a noun, like the Eucharist on the altar, it is a verb. It demands action. The Eucharist demands action by its very definition, to give thanks. Eucharist is more than just receiving Jesus in your soul. Now that's important, don't get me wrong. I mean, we, I need Jesus in my soul all the time. But it's more than just that. That as you receive Jesus in your soul, you must witness the Jesus in your soul by doing good deeds for other people. By the deeds of your life, show them that Jesus is in you. He can't stay locked up. And the only way you can let him out is by the love that you show. The best way to thank Jesus for loving you is to love one another. Jesus calls you, I'm using this as a verb, to Eucharist others with the same care and compassion, forgiveness and sacrifice Jesus has shown you. The waitress of my story, she Eucharisted me so well. I was a complete stranger and she took care of all my needs. She Eucharisted me. Luke describes what Jesus said at the Last Supper. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Luke 22, 19. For our sake, Jesus gave over his body on the cross. He gave over his body as the ultimate sign of God's sacrificial love for you. He opened the gates of heaven by giving up his body. And then Jesus says to you and me, do this in memory of me. What are we supposed to remember? What is the, what is the this that we're supposed to do? As Jesus sacrificed for you, Jesus calls you to give up your body, your body, in sacrifice for another. So what does that look like? Well, I think every mother and father who cares for their children gives up their body in sacrifice. I remember a man over at St. Mary, and uh, you know, I had a pretty good job at Weiss Tech. But I remember him coming to Mass one day and he had holes in his, in his pants and it kind of shocked me. I, I said, why do you got holes in your pants? What happened? He said, well, this is one of my few pairs of pants left. So I keep holes in my pants so that my kids' pants don't have holes in theirs. He buy them new pants. He ran a little short on money. He just wore his old pair to church. So his kids would look good. See, that's giving over your body, your very self. And every soldier who defends our country gives over their body. I'm thinking now of January 6th, pardon me, June 6th, June 6th, 1944, D-Day. On D-Day, you realize on the very first day, before the soldiers were even able to hit the beach, 9,000 of our men died in a matter of hours on D-Day. They weren't even able to get out of their LST, the land transport, because they were getting shot at from above. But you know what? Those brave men, valor and courage, they ran anyways, trying to reach the shore. And even though they didn't make it, they made a way for others to reach the shore and to defeat fascism and, and Nazism so that you and I could sit in this church free. They gave over their body. And I like this one. How about a family that adopts a child or takes care of an orphan 
they give up their body in sacrifice for a child that by blood is not even their own, but they adopt and love just like their own flesh. That's given over your body. Every caregiver who sacrifices for the well-being of another gives over their body. And that's what you and I are called to do. Anyone who makes sacrifices for Jesus gives up their body to thank Jesus who gave his body for you. This is what it means to live the Eucharist. Amen. So after you get the Eucharist, go out there and do that. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. This recording of Father Mike's sermon was produced and edited by me, Ish Ali. The intro music is Amazing Grace, sung by LaGrave Avenue CRC of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thank you to Father Mike for a great sermon. Previous recordings of Father Mike's sermons can be found at stmaryhillsborough.org. That's S-A-I-N-T, maryhillsborough.org. And on the St. Mary Hillsborough YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this program, please donate and help sponsor future sermon recordings. You can send checks to St. Mary Catholic Church, 212 South High Street, Hillsborough, Ohio, 45133. All donations are tax deductible and greatly appreciated. Thank you for listening.